And on today's show, why traditional approach to senior market works. Part two of this week's series on selling across generations with registered investment advisors and certified financial planners, Rob O'Dell and Heather Coulter. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and contributing author to Innsmark, life specs and backroom technician. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Rob and Heather. Thank you. Thank you. If you missed day two, I think you're going to need to hop out and watch it first. I think we're going to have to build upon each show kind of a, to get a good mm -hmm. tutorial experience. And we've been talking about kind of the introduction to four generations, your theory called mind mapping, which to me is brand new software, brand new approach. This is really outside the nine dots in my convention, to be honest with you. And today we're going to be talking about probably in the boomer's mind, our best and wonderful, most wonderful market demographic seniors, or as you call them, you use this word mature. Right, there's several labels that go on mm -hmm. and uh, seniors, probably most known as mature. It could be the traditional, the silver, the silent, the builder generation. And it's defined as people born typically before 1945. So there's a whole generation. Now this is not the greatest generation, and sadly they're dying off, uh, mm -hmm. the, which is World War II, but this is in between the greatest generation and the baby boomers, mm. known as the senior market. Now for advisors, the good news here is that most of their affluent clients, this is their most affluent clients, and probably their most profitable clients. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. The bad news is in the next 10 to 15 years, this generation is gonna pass away, and that money's gonna flow down to Generation X and the late boomers who do business entirely different mm -hmm. than this generation. Now that's gonna change the way we attack or even market our wares to the public domain. That is, that's correct. Let me show you. With the introduction of the 1992 LeSabre, Buick's reputation continues to grow. And it pleases us that people are taking notice. Because LeSabre isn't just another fine motor car, it's a Buick. And Buick is rapidly becoming an enormous symbol for quality in America. That commercial there symbolized was aimed to this generation. The, to the mature generation. The mature generation, the senior generation. Why? Because it built on tenure in the market pace, the history, the reputation, the quality that commercial said. Yeah, it's all about status and symbol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just not another fine car, it's a Buick. So characteristics of this generation, mm -hmm. typically they're known as the, the first off the farm generation. They have a, a very strong sense of work ethic to them. Uh, they tend to work for one, maybe two companies, and they have something that we don't know. It's called a defined benefit plan. Yes. Wow. We don't have those. <laughs> Our Boomers. generation does not. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And they have a, a, a trust in experts. So if you have some letters after your name, or you have an I love me wall, in the case of my friend down in Florida, mm -hmm. he has four I love me walls in his office, um, that means a lot to him. Their view of retirement is much different than mm -hmm. younger generations. Yes, so instead of being more engaged in life, like the younger generations or the, even the encore careers, they, they actually do hang it up. Mm -hmm. So they prefer to maybe golf or, or just relax, and they're actually in retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and retirement is a destination for them. And so advisors, a whole um, generation of advisors, are trained to sell to this generation in terms of stress the performance of their products that they sell, their, their quality, the, the financial backing that they had. Uh, this generation is somewhat fee adverse. So for us fee only advisors, they would have a hard time paying us a fee. Whereas if you're going to sell them a product and make a commission, they tend to be okay with that. And that's mm -hmm. the, this type of generation they're that they're known for. They're comfortable with that. They're used to that. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, what's the next thing you want to talk to talk about in the characteristics of these four generations? Right. So in the, in the senior generation, the next show will come back and we'll go to the approach. How to approach this generation, what to do, and more importantly, what not to do with this generation. We come back from the break, we'll do all that because I want to know what it's like. We're still talking to our mature, our seniors, and those are the people that really brought us to the table. I mean, they're our clients, they've been our clients for a long time. I'm kind of getting, I'm sorry that I learned late what they're into. We'll be right back after the break. It's not how much money you make for your clients, it's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with Heather Coulter and Rob O'Dell, RIAs and CFPs. 
We're talking about the senior generation, the generation that really, if you've been a planner in this business for 20, 25 years, that generation made our careers. Mm -hmm. So well, let's walk through some of the mechanics. I mean, this issue of bear, beware of too much technology, is that where they're at? Absolutely. Yeah, they're not very comfortable with the technology uh, as, as the later generations are. So that can intimidate them mm -hmm. sometimes. They're, they're more of the paper and, and they like to take the notes. So, so geriatrics aren't really on Google that much. You won't right. find them too much yeah. there. Okay. Okay. For instance, our firm, we're paperless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we present off large screen TVs like this, and then the older generation just is not as comfortable with this. Now, are they comfortable? You were saying that they really like the, the RIA, the CFP. They're into credentials. They're mm -hmm. into education. They want to know they're talking to somebody that actually knows what you're, they went through a school or a course on this. And they're also looking for name brand recognition. Yes. So they want to see, you know, they'll, they're attracted to the signs you see as you drive down mm -hmm. the street of large financial firms. They're attracted to that. Uh, your tenure in the marketplace, your history, your performance. Are you second generation in the industry, in the business? Mm -hmm. That means a lot to them. Mm. Um, they also like to sit and converse with you in, in a more informal way and hear your story and have, have them tell you their stories. That means a lot to them. Now, is that because they're trying to develop a trust factor? Is that why we're going through this entire engagement? Yes, they'll easily trust if they see all of those things. And also, they, um, the perception as they walk in, they, they like the suit and tie. They like it more formal. They, they look at the office. They like it uh, not as the, the younger generation is a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about eyeball to eyeball, are you saying that this is our guy? I'm not doing this over the phone. Correct. Okay, so no, no Skyping, no go to meeting. Right. We're doing this. They still. This is the generation. Right. Wants to see you, shake hands, touch. You right. Know, get they the want a physical to paper report and put it in their hands. Mm -hmm. They want to go through it. They want a formal presentation as you go through your, your review materials with them. Yeah. Now you keep bringing up the suit and tie. This is the second time in the show. I notice you're still not wearing a tie, but I just <laughs> not wearing one. Okay, and you own one, right? I just want to make sure everybody knows. I've seen yeah. it before. Clip on one. Yeah. Talk work. about the suit and tie mentality, Heather. I mean, because that's kind of like where you've seen this go. I mean, it's it's. I, I'm thinking they want this, don't they? Yeah, they, I think it goes along with um, their perception again and their name brand recognition and trusting and having all the certification and letters behind the name. That's just how they trust and they're more comfortable with that. So if you're watching this as a consumer and you're over 65, I'm your person, I'm your guy. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Another aspect here is uh, the, the gender mm -hmm. differences here. Yes. And our former firm, we used to work with this generation. Mm -hmm. Right. And because we're in the financial business, the male was, would usually dominate the, the role. Mm -hmm. And he would come and if, if she did show up, she was very quiet, maybe mm -hmm. a little intimidated, didn't say very much. Right. You know, that brings up another good point is because the male tends to be more dominant and us guys tend to die mm -hmm. before our female counterparts, it's very important that you use tools in your practice so that when, if and when the male dies first, that you have the ability to have the, the female in, involved, usually with an adult child. And that's where we use our mind mapping software because we're able to capture all mm -hmm. their financial information, put it in one place, and they can rest assured that if, if he goes first, she's well cared for mm -hmm. and all the information's there. Now, when you talk about attending events, I mean, is this like, I mean, I usually think that this is plate liquor geriatric motif. You know, they just show up for every single thing you do as long as there's food. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have more time on their hands, it seems. So they do attend all the events where the younger generations don't have that kind of time and, and prefer not to be your best friend. So we're not going to be doing seminars for Gen X and millennials. Mm -hmm. You might do five-minute go to me. Yeah, yeah, or some kind of go-to meeting or mm -hmm. webinar they might attend, but not this, this generation. Okay, so... This is traditional, and this is what we understand. Most of us that are advisors that have been around for, in my view, 30, I've been mm -hmm. around 30 years. When I'm looking at this, these things I understand. It's the rest of the week now that we're going to go, wow, Correct. this is going to be some serious change in the way we understand and approach that demographic. Which we're when you think about it, when wealth flows down, next 15, mm -hmm. when the major amount of wealth is coming down, 92% of air inherited wealth finds new advisors. 92 for all the other associates. Yes. I'm thinking that the World War II and Korean veterans are almost gone. Their wives aren't, but they are. Correct. Now, the person that's the caretaker of that generation is the baby, the older baby boomer daughter. Yeah. Now, is You're that right. going to change the map for people who are working with the same group? Dad died, but now I'm dealing not with really his wife. I'm dealing with his daughter who's taking care of mother. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where's that come the from? The communication Heather? has to be much different. That baby boomer daughter is going to communicate differently, and you better get her and her needs because she's much different than her parents. You, you guys have written about this. I saw it in an article that yeah. you've talked about this before, but you say that we, there's a whole new vocabulary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And That's style and approach. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. important. So that's just, just the future. Awareness. Awareness of it all. So you're, we're incorporating all this week not only the four generations, both genders, 
approach and methodology Correct. and how people value the values of each generation, what they value. That, that to me is a huge learning curve in my mind. When we get done with all this, we've, we're looking at seniors. Our seniors, sooner or later now, it's going to be very soon, that the baby boomer, especially the older segment of that baby boomer, we will be the geriatric. We'll be the senior generation. Yeah. And well, I hope the fun generation is fun in their 80s and 90s. Do you predict that? Well, the early boomers are a lot of fun. The late boomers, people born after 1959, mm -hmm. they're kind of stressed out right now because they're the sandwich generation. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that next program. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just go out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant, and we'll see you tomorrow.